This is a podcast from Rover. The Editor-in-Chief is live in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, welcome to the program. You're with the Editor-in-Chief Live. Great to have your company this morning. Welcome along. I'm Duncan Garner. And today we go full noise on the cost of living. And I never knew. I never knew this, but um, if you're struggling with the power bill or water rates, there is a crack team that can go into bat for you to negotiate a better deal or a way out of your mess. Who knew this? I didn't. Neil Mellon heads up utilities disputes and the demand for their services. I tell you what, it's through the roof. We'll also have some budgeting advice today and we'll chat to the woman I consider uh, should be regarded as the person who got us the living wage. So jump on the YouTube, TikTok, all the things that are right there leave us a comment what have you cut back are you struggling do you have a question for neil let us know and leave a, a comment in the comment section there it's news time here's media works deputy news editor it is grace cock very good morning the crime hit retail sector is sharing concerns about police the officer union has lost a pay dispute with the government sparking fury from those on the front line retail nz's carolyn young says business owners are watching no, we're certainly questioning will that impact how many people we're going to see out supporting the retail sector and answering our calls. They will have some concern. The Ministry of Health is being applauded for warning against the unsafe practice of early medical abortion reversal. Dr Luke Bradford from the College of GPs is glad to see a strong line in the sand being drawn. The concept is that you can take normally progestogen after having something like morning after pill or a medical termination. But there's just no evidence that this is either safe or effective. J.D. Vance has been named as Donald Trump's running mate. It was just announced at the Republican convention. CNN's Alyssa Farrah Griffin says he used to be a fierce critic of Trump. Loyalty is a big factor, and I think it's hard to be truly convinced that somebody who called him America's Hitler, a moral disaster and reprehensible, is truly a convert to Trumpism. Clearing Gaza of 40 million tonnes of rubble will cost close to $1 billion. A UN assessment has found it could take a fleet of more than 100 trucks 15 years to remove it. The price tag of reconstruction is now twice the estimates made by UN officials in January. In sport, in New South Wales, where they've called in former All Black on the eve of the state of origin decider, Richie Mawang has told Channel 9 he's helping out the Blues. Just one-on-one, just been around and just floating. Nothing really forced, just everything quite uh, authentic and natural. The Stars have picked up just their second win of the ANZ Premiership netball season, beating the Steel 54-53 in Dunedin. And Black Ferns co-captain Kennedy Simon has extended her contract with New Zealand Rugby through to 2028. That's news and sport. Okay, this guy Vance, Bob Vance, what's his name? J.D. Vance. J.D. Vance, yeah. He's super interesting. He Did he call Trump a Hitler? Yeah, so he's used to, he used to be one of his harshest critics, thought Trump was going to be the end of America, essentially, during the first uh, presidential term. Uh, somehow in 2022, converted. I think he saw the writing was on the wall that he needed to start siding with Trump more. Um, he's what they call like a new right. So he's not necessarily as hard-lined as some of these old-school Republicans, but he still has a lot of conservative views, think you should have the kids instead of the abortion. But then he wants banking executives to be held to account when their banks fail and he's oh, pro, good idea. He's pro <laughs> workers with unions and wants to you know help the rail workers yeah, called, and he stuff called so Trump Hitler. Yeah. So How's some, that going to last? Gosh, no. But I mean, there's only other... He had two other options. I don't think they were strong enough. There was Marco Rubio and someone else. I can't think off the top yeah. of my head at the moment. But no, He's a one-man band. Anyway, and he's young. He? He's only 39, so he'll get the young, new conservatives How long will he last? In, you know? How long will he last? <sighs> How as long does anyone last yeah. under Trump? Not Trump, that's right. Okay, good stuff, Grace. Ghana. Okay, so the vast majority of Kiwis will get a tax cut at the end of the month, uh, but I warn you not to expect too much. On 35k, it's about two bucks a week. On 50k, it's six bucks a week. On 100k, it's 20 bucks a week. And much of that's already been swallowed up by hefty price rises for pretty much everything. I'm talking about utilities, power, gas, water, phone, internet, the basic things that you need to run a household. Now, Neil Mellon is the boss at Utilities Disputes, an organisation aimed at helping Kiwis who are struggling with their bills, and he says the demand for their services is Guy Rockling, and he's with us now. G'day, nice to see you. G'day, nice to meet you, Duncan. Um, how long have you guys been around for? We've been around for about 21 years. So I we've didn't been, know. Yeah, no, most people don't know who we are. Even though we're on every electricity and gas bill, we struggle what do you to do? get to Kiwis. Look, we are here to resolve complaints between energy companies and their customers they can't resolve. We also have some water schemes as well. We look after one telco customer, Contact Energy. Uh, but we're really here to try and sort of lift the relationship between energy customers. Is it because it's 
poor? No, I think it's look. It's a healthy, healthy sign. There's complaints coming through. I think yeah. if you look at the industries that don't have complaints, sooner or later we find out there's a problem with them. So we think it's a good thing. But over the last three years, our complaints have tripled. And why, over what? What? Gee, that's huge, isn't it? So what? How many complaints do you have on the books right now? Look, the last year we had seven thousand complaints and eight thousand inquiries, which is sort of double the complaints we had the previous about year. About what? Mostly about billing. So the vast majority, 50% about billing, and about a third of those have affordability issues in them as right, well. Right, so they say they can't afford it. There's, that's one of the issues. That's right. And and what power companies, uh, they have to do is they have to work with the customer. They, if they identify they're in hardship, get mm. them on the right plan, give them some options to pay those um, bills back, and then if they need to, refer them to budgeting services. So if you get involved, what do you do? So what we do is look, we, we can't actually look at price, the price of electricity, but what we can do is go through all those steps with the consumer and the energy company make sure they've done the right thing and they've, they've referred the consumer to all those avenues. For How often are they on the wrong plan? Uh, it's not that common these days, I think. Uh, people tend to be a bit more savvy, and energy companies do tend to look at it when affordability comes in. But you do see people with a, a household like mine with four kids that might be on the wrong plan. And, and if you've got a lot of if you've got energy use is high, then you really mm. need to be looking around. See, I saw this morning in the paper there's a, a story about a woman who's a grandmother with her two muckles, um live with her. She goes straight to bed after dinner because she doesn't want to use the um, heat pump, doesn't want to use the, 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 the television. That's not New Zealand. Look, I, I read that too, Duncan. And, and Did you? Look, yeah. yeah, and we see those things as well. Disconnections are one of the things we really work hard on. So if they come through to us and they're facing, you know, right at the pointy end disconnection, we can usually stop that because it's usually about getting them in touch with the, the yeah. power company and working through it. And if they might be nervous about getting in touch with them because they haven't paid a bill or a- whatever. Absolutely. So, mm. and that's why we're a good service to come. They can come to us even. Look, they have twenty working days to work with the power company before we get involved formally. But before that, we actually spend a lot of time giving guidance and just telling people. Do they disconnect much? Uh, disconnections we're looking they probably have gone up a little bit they yeah. stopped over COVID but they work in my experience they work quite hard to try and avoid disconnections because they're expensive to get back on aren't they well people often can go to like pay as you go services as mm. well but yeah there, there is fees involved and, and what we try and do is really limit all of that impact and sort of work through those issues so you, the trend that you've seen is that people are struggling with the affordability of, of power yeah and look I think it's across the board telecommunications power and water those are all essential services and people really um, work hard I think that power our companies, they do get a bit of sick, but I think the ones we deal with, generally they try to work hard to sort of match those affordability issues. And there are a few small social retailers popping up as Yeah, well. I see that too. And there's, there are some good deals with some of the smaller ones to so shop around. People should shop around more for power, shouldn't they? Well, look, we don't do that. Power switch you're on is, we are um, on every bill, so is power switch. But, you know, yeah. that's one of the things you can do is just make sure you're on the right plan. Look at if you can shift time of use, um, all those sort of things. But just get in touch with us if you've got a problem yeah. too. I'm, I'm talking to Neil Mellon, who's the boss of Utilities Disputes, an organisation aimed at sorting all these issues out. Um, I reckon when you look at the profits of the big four, to, and you, you may or may not want to comment here, but $2.7 billion was their profit across yeah. the four big companies. Yeah, look, so four. At a time when New Zealanders are being screwed on everything else, they managed to put the power prices up. Well, look, I- Affordability is not really something we can we sure. can look at. It's the electricity authority and regulators. But what we try and do, if we get anyone who comes through to us, is we try and make sure they get the best deal, the best the best rate they can, the best plan, and the best um, working relationship with their power company, which is really important. But you reckon that they, you've seen more demand on your services because people are struggling with the affordability issue? Yeah, and, and awareness has gone up a little bit as well. The yeah. electricity authority helped us to be a bit more prominent on bills, and and what that's we good. Do, that's a good thing. Isn't oh, it? It's a great thing we do. One of the yeah. big things we do for people, Kiwis aren't great at complaining, but if they come through to us we can sort of write your complaint in a really succinct way, ship it off to the right team at the power company. We did that 2,000 times last year. and that, that I can't believe I didn't things. know you existed. No, most people don't. I mean, I've I, I got to admit, I didn't really know Utility Street that well before I started, but it is a great service, so the more people can call us. I mean, we're, you know it exists now because you're the head of it. <laughs> that's right, that's right. But um, you know, and once you get into that space as well, you, you start looking more at power and you realise how important it is to sort of just be on the right plan and, and really to get things sorted. How do we sort out this woman who's, you know, she's got, obviously got the two kids at home, two grandkids at home. She doesn't yeah. put on the TV or the heat pump. They go to bed and he's, the boy is chattering with his teeth because he's so cold. Yeah, look, they can give us a call. Our number's 0800 22 33 40 or they can email us info at utilities or info at udl.co.nz. We've got people in the team that can look at how you use
using energy. They can connect you to budgeting services as well. They can get the ball rolling with the energy company. There's something they can do about their affordability and so how you're, you're using you're energy. You're a middleman, right? You're a middleman. That a- means they don't have to deal with them and they might be worried about dealing with them. A- absolutely. We can take that worry out of it. We've got trained staff who are really empathetic. They know most people have probably already been through a complaints process before mm. they come to us, so they're really well adept at How listening. many staff have you got? We've got about 30, so we're, we're a not-for-profit. We're a pretty small company, really. We sort of try to get the most out of what we've so got. Do, do we fund you through our bills, do Yeah, it's through it's through the energy provider, so they pay a levy, which is pretty common for the sort of organisation like us in New Zealand and Australia. You might get a run on your service now. You I, hope, I hope so. Yeah. hope we do. Yeah. Does, 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 from where you sit, I mean, are you allowed a judgment on this? Do you look at the profits of the big power companies and think, Phew. At a time when New Zealanders are struggling with income. No, no. What, what I try to do is work really hard with the, the companies themselves. And I see that some of them do have hardship programs. Mm. They're trying to sort of help well, out do. those customers in those situations. And that's the kind of work we try to promote or link with them. But we, we have to be independent because we've got to resolve those complaints. Yeah. But but you find that if someone is struggling, are they, are, they able, are you able to manage it for them? The best, no, we, we put them onto a budgeting service. They're yep. the best people. But the best thing they can do is either give us a call uh, or give their energy company a call. And that's 0800 22 33 40. Yeah, interesting. So you've, you've picked up. Um, what, th- so threefold, you've got the increase of, of um, complaints about threefold. We have, but we haven't really grown that much in size because we're sort of focusing more on getting them done quickly and resolving them over the phone, you know, shuttling them and, and doing that service where we send the complaint summary off for them and, yeah. then, and we're there in the background if they can't resolve it. Okay, give us that number again, 0800? 0800 22 Okay, good on you, mate. I appreciate it. Nice, yeah. to, nice to meet you. You too. Yeah, Thanks, all David. the best. Cheers. Thanks. Ghana. Okay, 0800-863-293. Um, yeah, Ooh, I didn't even know they existed, but it's good to know that they exist. And if you have any issues, then get hold of them and on that number. Who knew? Who knew, right? So we're spending more and getting less, and our tax cuts have been gobbled up by bill hikes right across the board. It's hard to imagine that there's any way we can cut back more from our budgets, right? But maybe there is a way, and we can trim the, the last of that fat. Liz Blake is a financial coach from Enable Me, and she joins me now. How we can reevaluate our spending, and is the problem us? Is the problem could just be us? G'day, nice to see you. Thanks, Duncan. Welcome into the studio. Um, because we're all different, right? We all spend differently. We all have different addictions or little things that we, you know, we spend on. So, what's your best advice? People that have cut back and they're still struggling. Yes, thank you, Duncan. You're absolutely right. Everybody is different, but I think the first thing to think about is that you need to make a plan, and you need to actually know where you're at because how can you look to improve if you're not quite sure what you're doing at the moment? So, what if you just don't have enough money? Well, creating extra surplus, if you like, comes down to two things: earning more money, spending less money or delaying things that are not essential. So that might sound really obvious. <laughs> yeah, no, but not always for everyone. No, I, I, yeah. I accept that, yeah. Maybe yeah. you should be talking to the councils. They put our rates up by 20%. They say they can't trim any more fat. I mean, you must look at those sorts of headlines and think, come on, there must be all sorts of things. But that's a, that's a, that's a, that's the that's way from what, what we're talking about. But it just annoys me when I see councils putting up rates by 20%, which means that you know punters have to pay 20% increase in their rates, you know? Yeah, and everything's going up, mm. and that's that's exactly right. I must say, though, rates is one thing that you really do need to be across. It's similar to your mortgage. Yeah. It's the one thing, you know, a, a rating agency can sell your house out from underneath you. So mortgages and rates are really a priority. They're the first thing that should be paid, right? If at all possible. But if you are feeling pressure around your mortgage, the best thing to do is go and speak to the bank as soon as possible, mm. don't leave it until you're about to default, because mm. believe it or not, banks will try and help you. They have an interest over your security property, so they will try and help you. They don't want to sell it, do they? They, they, don't, they don't want to force sale, but no. they do not Very like it when you resort. don't communicate, right? They really hate it when you don't communicate. Exactly. Head in the sand is not a good strategy. Yeah. <laughs> What's one of the things that you see time and time again that's, that's a real problem for us Kiwis with our spending? I think sometimes it's really hard to determine what is actually essential and what is non-essential. And we're always asking our clients, well, what are your non-negotiables? People laugh when you say that. Everybody's Mm. different. But I think there's really only a handful of things that are truly essential. Mm -hmm. Let's just name them. Let's name the essentials. 
Okay, well, there'll be your rates, mm-hmm. uh, sorry, your, your mortgage or your rent really is, is the first thing. Um, but also talking to landlords can be helpful too. I know mm. that a lot of our clients are landlords and they were very kind to their tenants during COVID. So yeah. they I mean, not all landlords are evil. You know, there's this whole no, not at all. sort of um, no. approach that all oh, they're all nasty, but they're not. Again, you know? communication. Yeah. If you're really in strife, they will try and help you. They don't mm. want to evict you either as long as you're a good tenant. Yeah, yeah. and you might have been there for some time and they might give you a couple of weeks off or something, you know. They will. Yeah. yeah, well, they might. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, mortgage food? rates, uh, insurances, really important. I know that's something that people try and get rid of. It's a grudge buy, <laughs> um, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yes, food, uh, transportation to get to work, um, probably, you know, internet. Most people can't survive without that. Mm. Um, childcare. You have to have See, your children. These are all careful. fixed. These are arguably fixed costs. Yeah. And if you're looking yep. at, um, you know, the way inflation's been, the way wage increases have been, they haven't they haven't met in the middle. So people have fallen behind. And there are some families that simply don't have enough money to cover all those things that you've just said. What do you do then? Well, you have to look at ways you can earn more money. So mm. it, that comes down to the obvious first places to see if you can get a pay rise or work more hours. Can you take a second job? Uh, get a side hustle going? Mm. Can you take in a border? You know, some secondary schools have foreign students that yeah. they're looking for. It's a good idea, isn't it? Homes. If you have yeah. a spare, you, know, you might be elderly and you have a couple of spare rooms in your house. That's money, isn't it? Exactly, yeah. And re- reasonably easy to earn. It doesn't cost you too much more and you get mm. paid, you know, quite well for that. I just keep um, seeing I just keep seeing things pop up in the news, you know, in the last few weeks especially, of, especially now that it's winter, elderly going without turning their heater on, things like that. But that's going to kill them at some stage. You know, if they're not warm, you know? Exactly. Well, there are things that they can do. There is grey power electricity that they can speak to and get help from. Um, There are power companies that will give you, you know, free hours Mm. um, during the day. Yeah, I've seen that. That's good, isn't it? Yeah. Looking for those little tweaks. Yeah, Um, so shop around more, look around mm, more. And also people, you know, people say, I've got no money left, but they go and don't shop at Pack and Save. Things like Pack and Save, it actually is cheaper. It does. It, it, by Definitely. quite some margin, too. It um, does. That yeah. I notice, you know, if I, when I shop around. And I just went out to our coaches last night and said, What's your top tip? I'm speaking to Duncan oh, Garner yeah. in the oh, morning. Yes. <laughs> and oh, the pressure, we had they tons all come back them. to you, did they? <laughs> we had tons of good ideas. But the groceries was the one thing that most of them came back with first. Mm. And they said, it Really, it's, you know, get your plan, write your list, shop online. Don't buy impromptu yeah. purchases. Um, do click and collect or get it delivered if it doesn't cost Shop any online's extra. a really good idea because then you're not tempted by the temptation, right? Yeah, exactly. And meal planning is really good too because then you're not picking up those random things. Yes. You, it's, it's just being organised. Yeah, it is, isn't yeah. it? And getting yeah. into a routine. But also things that might throw you. Flat tyres, your car goes bang, you know, all sorts of things like that can really throw families. Absolutely, yeah, especially things like vehicles which you need to get to work. Mm. But, you know, that is another area you could look at. Could, can you carpool? Uh, can you, is it easy to get public transport and it's, not pay for parking and right. all and those it's, things? It's also interesting, isn't it, that people, you know, they'll still carry on some things because they think it's their right, you know, so I'm going to go and buy that dress, I'm going to go and buy those jeans, whatever. Do you really need it? Have a real think about, you know, where you're shopping and how often you are shopping. Exactly. You have to drill down to every line. Once you've established what you're spending money on, drill Mm. down to every line and see, you know, one, is it essential? Uh, If it's part of your plan, then how can you save money? I mean, I've got clients that spend $50 a year on clothing. I've also got clients that spend fifty thousand. So yeah, fifty thousand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, that's, that's really, right. It's really good advice. It's really good advice. But you have to be strict and you have to follow the routine always, don't you? You have to make your plan and you have to stick to it, and yeah. it's really hard. So yeah. you know, working with a coach, it's like if you're going to be an athlete or a musician, you mm. go and get help from a coach. It's mm. the same when you're trying to train your brain to be better. You guys do a great <laughs> job. Hey, I appreciate your time on the program today. Really good advice. Really good user friendly advice. Thank you so much. Thanks, Duncan. Okay. Ghana. All right, hundred eight six three two nine three is the number. Really good advice. Really good advice. But pack and save. You know, you've got to go there. I mean, if you don't go to pack and save and you're complaining about the cost of groceries, then you, you, that's your first move. Kalo, you pack and save, man. You, you pack and save. Yeah. Pack and save. Um, no. Well, every now and then, this is just bloody miles away from my house. Oh, is it? I mean, I've got a countdown route right around the corner. Yeah, and, okay. um, it's all worse now, isn't it? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. See, this is the thing. I know, 400 million bucks on, on a name I change. Know, <laughs> I know, it's absolute bullshit. No, but I try to go to Pack and Save as much as I can because I find, um, say, for example, if I get um, half a kilo of mints yeah. at Pack and Save versus, uh, what is it? The green one. Mm. Um, 
it's like two or three dollars yeah, cheaper. cheaper. Yeah, much cheaper. So much cheaper. Uh, James has said, Duncan, I'm surviving quite well, but I have a strict budget I stick to and I can do no spending um, other than just on the bills that I plan to. And nothing um, goes off that. I have essentials and I save money for the things that I want outside of that. Um, Tuxa says, everything just keeps going up. Now, I hope my wage keeps up, LOL. <laughs> I bet you it doesn't. It's getting harder and harder to survive, says Troy, in this country, and the missus earns good money. Can't get ahead. Quality of life sucks right now. Love your show, Dunk, says Troy. Good on you, mate. Appreciate it. Three questions. Okay, number one. Yeah, that is me, hand number one. one. There's one. Are we about to lose a pile of cops uh, to Australia? Potentially, yes. With the government getting its way with this $800 million wage settlement with the New Zealand Police Force, it is not what the cops wanted. It effectively gives them a pay rise of about 3.5% backdated uh, through that COVID period. When inflation was roaring at 7%, so the cops now feel hard done by. They feel like they're out of pocket. And maybe the grass is finally greener on the other side. We will soon find out. Two. Number two, sorry. How much did we spend on three waters? And how come we got nothing to show for it? The final tally is $1.3 billion. And we have nothing to show for it. 1.3. 64 million went on consultants alone. One PR firm, Senate Communications, was paid $1.22 million. When the government's got an army of in-house comms people, it should make you angry, this sort of wastage, folks. And it's why we're still paying dearly. It's called inflation. The pain is real. Can we get some criminal charges on some of these people that were involved or not? Three. At number three, um, have you heard about the man hiding the snake in his pants? Well, one man tried to smuggle 104 live snakes in his pants in an attempt to get across the border of mainland China. He'd been in a trip to Hong Kong. They picked that something was wrong. It wasn't, it wasn't, there was something that wasn't right. His pants kept moving. And surely that movement is the work of, that's not the work of just one snake. When he was caught, they found 104 live snakes in his pants, which didn't leave much room for anything else down there. Now, he went through the um, nothing to declare line. Okay, nothing to declare he went through, but the movement in his pants aroused suspicion, apparently. Duncan Garner, live. Yeah, that's what they reckon. Um, 0800 863 293. Um, I might just slam it, I think. Yes, slam it. Let's do it. It's the slam dunk. Right. It's a little wonder that Kiwis can't keep up um, with the cost of living. I want to spell this out for you. Our wages simply haven't kept up uh, with the uh, rapidly ballooning cost of living. With inflation hitting 7%, food prices are up 6% year on year, and our wage growth has gone from 2.4% to 3.8%. At least it's gone up probably largely thanks to the lady I'm going to interview very shortly. But it hasn't kept up. Do the maths. It doesn't stack up any of that, does it? Just for the basics. As a result, Kiwis have been asked to do the impossible these last two years, which is somehow cope. Let me spell this out for you. The hand that takes from us never stops taking, yet the hand that gives us something in return is rare, and it still hasn't delivered this this tax relief, apparently. Despite all the talk, national tax cuts are always underwhelming. Hundreds of thousands of mortgage holders now pay almost twice what they were paying just two years ago due to the most brutal rise in the OCR that I can remember in, in, in my lifetime. It has sent people to the wall. Reagan from Where's My Money podcast paid 4 k in repayments for his mortgage a month uh, when he bought his house. He's now at $8,000 a month. Just $700 of that 8000 goes on principal. He's had to find 4000 bucks a month. Then came the utilities, and they all wanted to, to fleece us, and they did. Contact announced power price increases of 12%. Almost all the power companies have hiked prices and there's new fixed costs that come in next year will add 15 bucks a month to every power bill. <laughs> Thanks very much. But at what cost? I'll tell you what cost. Pakaranga grandmother, um, Kalina Tepani, is in the media today saying that her place is so cold that her grandson's teeth regularly chatter as he jumps into her bed to stay warm. They can't afford uh, the heat pump and they don't watch TV. It's too expensive. Is this the New Zealand that we know and love? Hell no. 40,000 New Zealanders each day don't turn on the heater due to cost apparently. Water rates went up on July the 1st for those who pay for water. Telco bills are up. Spark started charging for the extra mail. Used to be free a couple of months ago, then they put the broadband prices up last month. Rates. Rates. This is a debacle. They are well up. Councils needed to do better than this. Where are we meant to find this money that everyone keeps asking us to front with? Kiwi homeowners face an average rates rise of 15% over the coming year, 15% across the board, and there's no sign of relief in sight. Local government New Zealand came to that figure by collating all the planned rate rise increases of the 48 of the country's 78 councils, okay? Among those likely to see the biggest rates hikes this year, listen to this, Canterbury residents are facing a hefty 24.2% increase. Hamiltonians are likely to see 19.9%, while Whangarei is looking at a record 17.2% increase in their rates. That's so big. How are you meant to find that money? They say they can't cut anything else, but 24, 19, and 17% increases are horrific. People just can't suck that sort of increase up. So what about the relief? What relief? Prepare to be underwhelmed. Nationals' tax cuts are still a month away. Um, the cut in the OCR might even come at the same time. 
We need to help and support months ago. Tax cuts are such a, a slow and efficient tool to help us, but I expect most of you have spent them twice over already. The tax cuts amount to two dollars a week if you're on thirty-five k. So if you're on thirty-five thousand dollars, and then many, many part-time workers are, because people want more hours, you get two dollars a week. It's two dollars nineteen if I want to you know, be exact. Six dollars on sixty k, and twenty bucks a week on a hundred k, and we're still waiting for them. Sure, it's a, it's a step in the right direction if you want more money, but your power bill increase will take your tax cut, just like that. It already has. Nothing has reduced or become cheaper. But last week, we saw signs of a turn, with the food prices taking their first backward step in six years. So a $4.50 loaf of bread became one cent cheaper. I mean, seriously, one cent cheaper. Uh, no one was going to round that down. What I find most heinous, though, um, is this really difficult period, is just how much our utilities and banks have screwed us. Banks made close to $10 billion profit in the last 12 months, the big, big big Aussie banks. That all goes to Sydney. And our power companies, New Zealand owned and operated, so the four big power companies, they made a $2.7 billion. Did they really have to hike the prices on us after that? $2.7 billion. How much do you want from us? It's tone deaf. Give us a break in our hour of need. No, what, what did we do? We put the boot into Kiwis and demanded more. Profit, profit, profit. Screw the little guys. Shareholders are their number one priority. The owners of the assets, which was arguably us back in the day, we are merely cannon fodder or collateral damage. That is, they can and they will sting us, and they are. As a result of all this, unemployment's risen, but it doesn't tell the, the full story. 575,000 New Zealanders are what I would say underemployed. They're in part-time work and they want more hours. Youth unemployment's 12.4%. That's three times the country's rate of unemployment. Just last quarter, New Zealanders spent $740 million less in the retail shops compared to the same quarter the year before because we don't have the money. And now comes the pain for retailers and restaurants and cafes. They're empty. We can't save them because we're not eating out like we did. We can't afford to. But watch the carnage as the restaurants close. We saw it with SPQR, this um, fancy Auckland uh, eatery in the past few days. The Reserve Bank governor must now see this pain. And surely he can't let this stretch into next year. Hasn't the job been done? I mean, we've been dealt to by inflation, and getting the economy back on track has been a slow crawl. But New Zealanders are now going without heating, jobs are being lost, businesses are going under, and we're still doing that by design. We created this slump. The economic cost is huge, the social costs are even too big to contemplate. But we can design this differently. We can call off our dogs now, and it's time, surely it's time. I personally think the government's tax cuts, if anything, are the last thing that we need. They put in jeopardy the recovery because surely that's inflationary to pump money into the economy. And it might just slow the Reserve Bank's decision to cut the OCR, all for the sake of a few bucks and a promise. I think the tax cut should have been delayed, not, not cancelled, but it's just d- delayed. Anyhow, hopefully soon we can see the wood through the trees, or whatever that, that term is. Um, well, we're almost there, folks. I reckon we're almost there. Ghana. Right. Um, I want to talk about um, what I, I regard as... Um, I, I think she's a special woman, this, this woman, and, and I think she's done an amazing job. Uh, this is Lindy McIntyre, and um, everybody knows what the living wage is these days. Well, you should do. It's largely part because of her. Um, it's defined as the income necessary to provide workers and their families with the basic necessities of life. It's made a huge difference, and it's above sits above the minimum wage. Uh, Lindy was the head organiser for the movement, and her book, Power to Win, details the history of the movement in New Zealand. And she is with us now. Lindy, nice to see you. G'day. Good morning. Good morning. Kia ora. Hey, you, to see you, yeah, you too. I haven't seen it's been a few years. Hey, um, you've done well. No. You've done really well with this. It's, it's, it's. I reckon it's, it's taken off and it's taken grip. And even this place here, at MediaWorks, we don't pay anyone below that that living wage because we believed in it in the well end. Done. Right? Yeah. Well done. Yeah, yeah, it has taken off, and it's true. Twelve years ago, nobody was really, right, nobody talked about the living wage as a concept, and now it's it's part of our language. Yeah. Everyone knows what the living wage is now. I think I was at the um, I think I was at the um, opening of that. I think when you launched that, I'm pretty sure yeah. I was there. And yeah, there was um, there was a bit of reaction. Business tried to ignore it. Business tried to say, "No, this doesn't exist. These people don't exist. No, no, no. We don't want to know about them." But slowly and surely, people signed up. How many people are? How many companies are on the on the books now? Well, on the books, that is fully accredited, signed up, and kind of paying a fee to be acknowledged publicly as a living wage employer. There's um, a bit under 400 employers. But I just want to break that down a bit because I'm so interested in the discussion that you're having this morning, especially targeting the big banks. Mm. And you're quite right in what you've been saying. You know, with all that money pouring offshore, it's just completely, it's wrong, 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 the, the mega profits that our banks are making. 
but all the banks now, it took a long time, but all the banks, the whole banking sector in New Zealand, are uh, accredited living wage employers, every one of them. Well, that's and a good thing. what that means, yeah, don't, you might think, oh, well, chief executives and banks don't need the living wage. We're actually talking about the contracted cleaners who are cleaning overnight, cleaning branches, if there, where there are any, cleaning head offices. We're talking about the security guards picking up money, um, that dangerous job. We're talking about hospitality workers and cafes. So the pressure and the visibility of the living wage um, concept and campaign and the people power behind that has put pressure on the banks not to do everything we want them to do, but to deliver it in that one respect to become living wage employers. And that, that's been one of the big achievements. It's changed the life of tens of thousands of workers who are employed largely by contractors in within our banking um, Yeah, services. that's crucial. No, it's really crucial and well done. Congratulations and, and good on you for that too because um, it has, and as I say, it's lifted lifted the rates of pay here. But this company I know a few years ago decided, sure, right. we can't have people sitting on 40 grand anymore. We've got to push them up to at least the living wage. So, so and I, I mean, as soon as it happened, I thought of you. I thought, oh, good on you. Good on you, Lindy. But <laughs> in, in saying that though, the banks are still taking 10 billion bucks out of New Zealand. You can't be that much of a champion for that. <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't think um, you're not hearing me being a champion for the banks. I'm being a champion for any employer who does the right thing and lifts the staff of their lowest paid. And I've been so interested in the conversation that you've had this morning, um, first with the guy talking about the, um, the whole electricity um, kind of um, service of getting advice, mm. and then the financial advisor – and the roles that these people are playing are so important. Mm. But we're talking about, um, say, for example, a night cleaner on the minimum wage who, um, if their car breaks down, and there's no public transport as an option in the middle of the night to get into Wellington City from the outer suburbs to go and clean Parliament or the High Court or government government offices or you know corporations. The, the options for people on the margins, the options for our lowest paid workers are so few and it really is a choice between shall I fill up the car which I need to get to my job otherwise I'm going to lose my job or can I put food on the table. The, the options are actually that stark for our for the lowest paid in our society. And you asked a question earlier, what kind of New Zealand do we want to be in? Well, mm. we don't want to be in that kind of New Zealand where people work hard for more than 40 hours a week or want more hours and are still living in poverty. So That's what, not the kind of New Zealand uh, I want. And this, just this grandmother, I mean, I looked at this this morning. She's yeah. got um, two walkers living with her. So she's got the boy and the girl living with her, grandkids. And so they have dinner and then they don't turn on the heat pump. They don't watch TV because the cost of that, um, Lindy, and they go straight to bed. That's and in the morning, he's chattering. His teeth are, his teeth are, uh, are chattering because it's so damn cold. They haven't turned the heating on. I don't want to live in that country. Uh, we, we we have to somehow get that right. Whether the income level increases of you know, I think she's a sickness beneficiary. If you're on a benefit, you've fallen way behind during this COVID period. You 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 have not survived. It's it's appalling. And thank you for sharing that story this morning. And it just it it really puts in stark relief what what we need to change in New Zealand. And you're quite right in your earlier comments. The tax cuts are just are, are completely irrelevant. Mm -hmm. The ta tax cuts are just. Are just they're not even in this conversation. These are people that that uh, aren't touched by those so-called tax cuts. Two bucks, Where Lindy. the tax cuts two bucks. is to, for example, landlords. Yeah, but two dollars. If you're on 35K, and a lot of people are because there's 575,000 New Zealanders. I looked at mm, that this yeah. morning. That are on part-time work. They want more hours, but they're on part-time work. You've seen this all your life. Mm. And, and, and so they're on 30 grand, right? And so they get two bucks a week. What on earth are you going to do oh, with that? Eh? Well, it's meaningless, and actually so is the recent um, so-called rise in the minimum wage. 45 that's, cents that's an far hour. far less, 2% far less than MB recommended. MB. You know, it's, it's and far way, way less. When you were talking earlier, Duncan, about how average wages are moving, that the, those on the very minimum, that's 80,000, uh, on the minimum wage, and actually another, I think, 360 who are less on less than the living wage, that's a huge chunk of our society for whom who haven't haven't been affected at all by either the tax cuts 
or the very mean-minded poultry increase. Well, you could barely call it an increase in the minimum wage. So we we really do have our work cut out. Yeah, you, you do. And if you look at participation, you know, take out take out the the unemployment number is almost irrelevant. Look at the participation rate. I think it's about seventy percent. So you've got a third of the country um, either wanting more hours or, or unemployed. That's massive, Lindy, and, that, that's, and that's the real that's the real yeah. issue right there. You know, that's it's not productive. That's not giving them better lives. The jobs aren't there, and certainly the pay rates aren't. Yeah, well, that, that that's absolutely right, and we need to we need to increase employment. Um, but all workers need to have have got have got a basic right to lead decent lives and to be able to participate in society. So we can't have people working so many hours um, that they are that they haven't got time to be with it. Their family can't go to parent teacher meetings or you can't participate in. Um, cultural requirements of their of their communities so we need a rate and that's the living wage it's Good not idea. a it's not a wage of luxury but it's a wage that enables people to lead decent lives and and be part of their society and you've put and up that's with what pressure. this book is about yep. how to win it's yep. about getting together and making sure that everybody has that sort of a wage, not luxury wage, but actually enough to have a decent life. Lindy, good stuff. Well done. Congratulations on your work. I've always admired what you've done and um, and you continue to, oh. so good on you, mate. Oh, thank you. Okay. Th- thanks for having me on the programme. You're very welcome. really enjoyed it. Okay, take care. Cheers, Lindy. Tell her. Duncan Garner. I mean, that's her life's work. I mean, that's what she does. Oh, I think I think it's brilliant. And she's achieved, she put upward pressure on wages Especially when Labour was in office, they looked at the minimum wage, looked at the living wage, and it made them made them increase it more and 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 and, and, and bigger terms. I reckon. Um, uh, Forrester, are you there, mate? I am. I am. Yeah. I've got some. Uh, I've got some comments for you this morning. Okay. Uh, these are from TikTok. Some towns don't have a pack and save like Dargaville. You'd have to travel all the way to Fongaree. True. True that. True that. Uh, companies are trying to reclaim money they lost during lockdown. And uh, as a team leader of Money Talks NZ Financial Helpline, we see and hear these stories every day. Yeah, it's it's really it's really quite dramatic. Um, Someone else has said uh, Duncan received 109 million as trust chair to run all media. That's great, isn't it? Where's that money? Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. Where's where's our money? Hang on a second. Hang on a second. (laughs) There's the first 50 of it. Yeah. Oh, you got the rest of the 109 million. Who owns 109? That's conspiratorial. <laughs> the, uh, let me tell you. Let me tell you the truth. Whoever seen that? Let me tell you the truth. The media lost 92 million dollars in one year and went bust. Well, not you why, apparently. That's why, there's no, that's why there's no news. Over. I live at home with my mother. I mean, that's not someone. That's not someone who's picked up 109 million bucks. Shove that your pipe and smoke it, pal. Whoa! <laughs> Come on! <laughs> oh, I'm at home with mummy. Hello, ah, oh, bad boy, bubby. Um, anyway, Duncan. Most places only offer around 35 hours per week. That's about all you get. It can't cost much to run a TV, says Troy. No, it actually does. It actually does. Because it it you'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. They're trying to save money. Um, yeah. It looks like there's quite, quite a lot of pain. Right. Um, that's us, I think. Um, Kalo, anything to add? Nothing from you, is there? You've, um, you've, you've checked out. You're checking in, checking out. Oh, mate, yeah. Um, no. You good? Yeah. Good on you guys. Thank you so much. That's us. This will be available as a podcast on Rover because that's what Kalo does. He snips and tucks and all does all that sort of stuff. Um, well, you know, get it all right. Nip and um, tuck? Yeah, nip and tuck, mate. Um, thanks for your feedback and support. I'm Duncan Garner. I'm Duncan at Rover.nz to my team, Caleb, Miranda, Forrester, and Zarina. Thank you guys. Um, Miranda, special thanks to you. You do a great job every day. Okay, you really do. You put it together. It was a great show today. Lots of lots of feedback, right on point, and I appreciate it. Thank you so much. This is one of the best countries on earth, and not, neither is this a dress rehearsal or a curtain raiser. This is your life. So get out and enjoy it. Take care, New Zealand. Ta-da. That was Duncan Garner, editor in chief, live. Miss something on the live stream? Text Duncan to three five nine eight to listen back on the podcast. Want to get in touch? Call 0800 863 293.